Welcome to another episode of the Popcorn Confessional. And on this episode, we will be reviewing a rockumentary, The Sparks Brothers. Was it a good documentary to see in the theaters? Should you wait till it comes out in about a month to stream it? There's only one way to find out. So fire up the Jiffy Pop and meet us in the booth. The Sparks Brothers, a documentary about one of the most influential bands that you have never heard of. Directed by Edgar Wright, who you may know from Shaun of the Dead and Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, both awesome movies. Sparks formed under the name Half Nelson in the late 60s and then soon rebranded under the name Sparks in an attempt to gain more notoriety. The film tells the story of Sparks, through five decades of music, 25 albums, and while they are not the most known band, I didn't know about them, they are one of the most influential bands in the music industry. And if you go ahead and check out this documentary about them, you'll find out why and you'll see some of those parallels like maybe we did. What did you think about that? Movie. So we went to go see this because we did see the trailer for it. And honestly, we weren't sure if it was a real movie or if it was some kind of a spoof. We looked them up because we didn't know who the Sparks brothers were. Uh, Ronald and Russell Mayle are the Sparks brothers. We didn't know who they were. We had never heard of them, never heard their music. So we looked it up, found out, oh, they're real. Okay. Still looks interesting, and honestly, there wasn't anything else to see. <laughs> we had seen everything. But, before we say because there was nothing else to see, yeah. the trailer is funny. It so is. So you'll see clips of it, and mm-hmm. I'll probably play the opening few lines, despite you two probably slapping our hands and saying it's copyright, just to show 30 seconds of them talking. How many albums are there? 25 albums. Are you brothers? We are brothers. How did you first meet? We are brothers. Music. But the 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 trailer for it was just it kind of caught you, yeah. and hearing the two of them talk was you kind of felt the charisma come right off of the screen as yeah. you're watching the trailer. So it was yeah. it caught my eye right away. And yeah, was, as soon as we saw the trailer, we were kind of like, yeah, we need to see this because it it does pull you in, which is good. Obviously, you want that. Yeah, and I don't think we ever seen a documentary in the theater before. I don't think so. I mean, we've seen a lot of things in the theater. Mm, documentary. Don't think a documentary, though. No. So, you know, if you kind of like documentaries, you'll like this. And mm. if you like the old VH1 behind the music, but without controversy, you'll like this. Mm-hmm. It was a very good film, and to just to see a lot of the people that were in the documentary, so you have Beck, you have Patton Oswalt. You have a bunch of people who I know, but the names I forget. Jason Schwartzman. Uh, Duran Duran. Flea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they're all talking about their experiences with, you know, discovering the band and how it influenced them. And I have to say, having watched the documentary and going back and looking at some dates, one thing that I mentioned to you is like, Kind of remind me of Queen a little bit. Yes. But they came before Queen. Yes. So you kind of see some of the the things that Queen may have borrowed from them and put into their act and probably why one of the reasons why you may have never heard of Sparks. Yeah, because I think that Queen was kind of like, we like that. Let's use some of it. And they took off. We all know what a success Queen was and, and still is, honestly. I mean... I have my kids know who Queen is, and and they're young. Yeah. <laughs> so. and, and and unfortunately, like Mister Wonderful will say, a large branded company would crush you like a cockroach. It would be a slaughter fest for an investor. Fortunately, that's something that probably happened to Sparks. Yeah. Now they stayed active. They kept making music, mm-hmm. and the cool thing about it is they're kind of the artists that you want to see because they're like, I'm doing it for the art. And the art comes first, and mm-hmm. I don't care what anybody says. 
blah, 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 blah. And they just yeah. keep pushing out albums. Yeah. And changing with the times and influencing the times as they mm-hmm. went along. Yeah. Yeah. And even when music was different from what, from the kind of music they were making, they were not pressured to change. Mm-hmm. They were like, this is the music that we make. This is what we like. And they just did their own thing. And it, I mean, it worked for them. They've had a long lasting career. They're just not, you know, the huge, well-known, I mean, at least not to people like us. So, you know, they were one of the first bands to start using that. And obviously we know what happened in the 80s and how it kind of influenced other bands. Like you were mentioning, you know, Diva. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you can see it in music like that, and maybe even a little bit of the Talking Heads, if you think about it a little mm-hmm. bit too. Yeah, a little bit, I think, with when the way the whole band interacted together, mm-hmm. and I, they also had a song called "Computer Girl," which was before anybody really knew what a computer was. It was long before anyone had a personal computer. It's when a computer was a huge, giant machine in a closet. You know, it had its own room because it was so big for a business to run. But that's what a computer was. And, you know, they had this song called Computer Girl. And so that was, you know, definitely before its time as well. Now, there's one thing they're going to get into uh, during their career. If you look it up, you'll see this information is they did 21 nights in a row of each of their albums. So we said the 25, but at the time they had 21 albums and they did it every single night for 21 nights. And they practice for four months to get there. And I was talking about that with somebody today. That's just an incredible feat in itself yeah. to have to remember around 200 plus songs and yeah. deliver those. That's amazing. Yeah, definitely. For me, I have to say the album since I showed, the, the cover art, funny as hell. Mm-hmm. A lot of the music videos that they were doing back in the 70s and the 60s, funny as hell. Entertaining, yeah. yeah. Very entertaining. Both the brothers. Uh, very charismatic and entertaining just to listen to them talk and tell stories about going through the music mm-hmm. industry. Would you listen to any of their stuff today after watching that documentary? No. What? <laughs> so they did play some of their music, obviously, during the documentary. It's just not my type of music. I don't, while they did, you know, they did influence other artists, I believe, in their music. I like what the other artists did better with that influence. It's j- I just wasn't really into the music. But I thought the documentary itself was very entertaining. It had me laughing. And I liked the aspect of having, you know, well-known actors and musicians uh, come in and, and talk about them. And the Spark Brothers themselves were... They were just hilarious, and they were really funny together. You know, I mean, they're brothers, so they acted like brothers, but you could also see that there was a real, true friendship between them. Uh I would listen to some of their stuff. Not all of their stuff, because, like, I kind of, when I was watching it, and as they were talking about how their styles changed and progressed, Mm -hmm. where their style and their popularity dipped is when they were playing those music, I was like, eh, I could see why I kind of dipped in some of those years. Mm-hmm. It wasn't that great. But some of their early stuff sounded really badass that I want to check out. Maybe some of their newest stuff. So one night when nobody's around, I'll have <laughs> to play it on my Amazon Music and just let it run through the playlist, and hopefully I don't get stuck with a bunch of the stuff in the middle. Hopefully Alexa can figure out who they are. Yeah. Yeah, they have a hard time with some bands. <laughs> Got into an argument with Alexa the other day trying to pick a band up. Anyway, so what do you rate it? (laughs) So I'm going to rate it a little differently just because it's not a movie movie. It's a documentary. So I'm not going to rate it based off of like movie ratings. Were you not entertained? I was. Yes. So I'm going to give it a B. A? Mm -hmm. That's a good rating. I'm going to go now, as I mentioned... There has to be some music, has to be a good story, has to keep me entertained, has to be funny moments to really get a good grading on there. So I'm going to go with an A-. minus. I thought it delivered on all fronts. The movie is over two hours. Yeah. And you're entertained throughout the entire movie. Like, bathroom breaks during a two and a half hour movie kind of sucked because it's like, oh man, there's not really going to be a slow part here. Like, yeah. Where you can kind of pick it out in other movies. Yeah. So definitely, uh, definitely an A- minus for me. And with that, 
this week, if you haven't seen or if I haven't harassed you on social media or private messages, Five Things Episode 1 for Season 1 dropped this week. So go check it out, support us, and let us know on that show if you agree with those lists. If you want us to do lists that you want to see in Season 2, because there is going to be a Season 2. We're already lining up the guests. But that's enough on five things. Let us know what you think about this movie. It may be hard to find in the theaters. I'm not seeing it on any streaming platforms right now. So it may take you some time to find it. It's worth seeing in the theater to get away for two and a half hours. Enjoy the time. Enjoy some music. Enjoy some laughs. And just sit back and eat some popcorn. So don't forget to like this video. Subscribe. And hit the notification bell so you can see when our new videos are coming out. So, you know, we have Five Things Episode 2 that will come out on Monday. We have some more interviews coming out from Donna Jean on the Coffee House of Horror. And then you'll see some updates on some other potential show ideas. Until the next. Later. See ya.